Hello everyone, Jason Lewis, Professional Comic Colorist here. It's the second video in what I hope to be a weekly or possibly bi-weekly series where I color pinups for my various comic artist friends. Uh, this week's uh, pinup is uh, Hawkeyes by Brendan Cahill. Uh, you might know Brendan Cahill from his run on Transformers. Uh, great artist, good guy. Before we get started here, I want to talk a little business. Uh, I'm doing a new thing where subscribers to my YouTube channel have a chance to win uh, prints from all the videos from the previous month. So how it's going to work is in January, I'm going to have a random drawing where one subscriber will win uh, that first Batman uh, pinup in November and plus all the videos I do for December. So I'm going to do that every month and all I have to do is subscribe to win and um, I'll get all the subscriber, get their info and uh, just send them out some prints of uh, all the videos I've been doing. So with that, uh, let's talk about this. Uh, this is a line art, pretty much how uh, Brendan sent it to me. Uh, sometimes with um, artists, you'll get like kind of like some grayscale in there. We're trying to show you like uh, they're either they're trying to separate something or they're trying to like, you know, there's like some kind of effect. Uh, with this one, uh, Brendan kind of wanted like uh, the backgrounds in there to separate a bit from um, Hawkeye and uh, Katie there. So yeah, he put it in the grayscale, but he left it on its own channel, so it'd be easier for him to work with. And that's always a plus because a lot of times like grayscale stuff, if you uh, incorporate it with the black and white line art, it's just really hard to work with and kind of gets in the way and muddies things up, but I'll show my flats here real quick. As you can see when I'm flatting for myself, uh, I'm not really trying to think about how I'm going to color the finished piece. I'm just using bold colors as a purely an organizational tool. That way I'm not wasting a bunch of time trying to figure out how I'm going to be coloring the piece. I'm just purely uh, tracing the uh, shapes for later. You can see uh, on the right there I've got my uh, channels palette open. Uh, I do a lot of selections, like especially with all that grayscale that uh, Brendan put in there. Uh, before I start, you know, flatting the piece, that way I don't have to retrace them later. The first thing I do after I flat a piece is I uh, put the flats on their own layer and set the opacity to zero. That way I don't see them, and then I just set uh, the painting layer I do to like a flat gray color. I knew with this one I wanted to do kind of a purplish kind of theme, so I added a bit of purple to that gray to get me started. One question I get asked a lot is, uh, like, how do I choose my colors? Like, what dictates the colors I put down? Is is it a mood? Is it the characters? Really, it's everything, uh, depending on what I'm doing. For this one, I really wanted to homage uh, Matt Hollingsworth run on Hawkeye, which I thought was uh, really revolutionary. But one thing you, uh, you'll you learn about me is, like, I can't buy a comic unless I respect the coloring. Like, the story could be amazing, the art could be amazing, but if the coloring sucks, I don't touch it. Like, especially if uh, there's no, like, specific colorists credited. Usually that means they went with uh, one of those cheapo coloring houses, which either pay, like, a bunch of amateur colorists or foreign colorists, like, 20 bucks a page, and there's, like, 10 of them doing it. It's just the most generic, kind of, like, rushed coloring job ever. So, on principle, I stay away from those. I refuse to support mediocrity with my wallet. But getting back to Matt, uh, those early Hawkeye issues he did... Everything was a very flat color and kind of these purplish hues. I mean, really interesting stuff. I mean, very different from anything else you saw on the stands at that time. And it's one of those things like, I can see a lot of people try to imitate without really understanding about uh, like why he would do that and like the choices he was making. Plus, uh, you know, Hawkeye has traditionally been in all purples. Uh, so does Katie Bishop. I mean, it goes back to the days when like uh, there was only about 64 uh, colors you could use for superheroes. So you kind of had to stretch them all out. And you kind of had to do a priority. You know, like your main characters, red and blue, and then kind of your secondary characters, you know, kind of like Flash and Iron Man were like red and yellow. And then you get down to like, you know, like yellows and greens, like the Vision or Iron Fist. And then by the time you get the Hawkeye, like you're pretty much in like purples and browns and grays, uh, you know, villain colors, what they used to call them. So the overall plan here is I'm going to start with uh, this kind of purplish gray color and kind of build off of that. Um, as you can see here, I got kind of carried away when I first got the piece and kind of worked a little bit ahead on Katie. But yeah, that's basically the plan. I'm just using the hue, uh, brightness, saturation to kind of like, you know, not go too far from that gray background color initially. Kind of build everything off of that. Like, you know, the skin tones are kind of purplish. Uh, you know, obviously his, you know, outfit is very purplish. Uh, the blonde hair, you know, again, is like very much in the purple range. But if you're building it off this kind of gray color, like, it doesn't look that extreme. Like, once you start kind of moving everything around, I mean, you understand, like, you know, they're, you know, couple of uh, Caucasian people, you know, with like purple suits, you're not really confused about it. Uh, one thing uh, about uh, the skin tones here is uh, it's like an old um, illustrator kind of thing that goes back from like, you know, the dawn of painting. It's like usually, you know, you kind of skin tone wise, you want to make your heroes look a bit more rugged, uh, your ladies look a bit more pale. 
I mean, obviously, you know, like, uh, you know, if you've got, you know, the lady's a surfer and uh, the guy's a vampire, you want to kind of adjust for that, you know, in different uh, ethnicities. But that's just kind of, you know, how people are used to kind of seeing, you know, paintings and illustrations. It comes back from the days when, like, you know, uh, guys worked in the field and women, you know, worked in the home. But anyways, um, you're not getting uh, political or anything, just kind of telling it, you know, how I learned it. So I'm going through here, I'm kind of messing with the backgrounds. As I kind of remember the run, like, uh, you know, originally, like, Hawkeye, um, it was all in New York City, so they had kind of like a cold, kind of grayish tone to the backgrounds, and I kind of remember them doing a, uh, a Katie Bishop kind of uh, series where they everything was kind of in, I think, Florida, so everything was kind of more tropical. Working on the dog here now. Like, I've seen this dog colored like a thousand of a colors. Anything from gray to like a cream color to brown. So I'm, I'm going with them being kind of like a cream color in my head. But, you know, I'm staying with that kind of gray. So, yeah, it's going through here and, you know, trying to make everything kind of, you know, seem like they're made of different materials. You know, like I'm using um, kind of like an aluminum kind of gray for like Hawkeye's bow. Uh, Katie's stuff, I'm going to assume, is kind of made more of wood. So her bow is kind of you know, more, going to be more of like a, you know, kind of a tan kind of wood color. Uh, their outfits are different. You know, Katie's wearing, you know, basically spandex, where he's wearing more of like a kind of Kevlar leather kind of thing. And I'm going to make her boots uh, when I get to that, you know, kind of more of like a suede kind of leather. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm building off that initial purple and just kind of mis messing around with the hue and saturation to kind of get what I want. So that way I'm not going too out of bounds not going too crazy. I and mean, that's the thing, like, I see with a lot of amateur colorists, like, they start, like, with a white background, they start adding in these colors, and, like, nothing really gels. Like, everything's too far separated. So, yeah, here we go. This is basically my plan. So, I want to go back in and start uh, rendering out, you know, Katie some more. Uh, with, with women, you know, like, uh, you want to not put too many lines in the face. I mean, I, I am guilty of basically kind of you know, I push that, you know, kind of rule to the limit. But right there, you know, I've kind of got her cheekbone. I've got a couple of highlights. I'm trying not to go too crazy because the rule of thumb is, like, the more lines you put in someone's face, you know, the more you age them. And, you know, she's a, a teenager or, like, a 20-ish woman. I'm not sure exactly how old she is. I mean, you know, comics is kind of like, you know, whoever draws it, you know, tends to draw, you know, people with a certain age range. Uh, again, like, as a... No offense to whoever designed her costume, but I always thought it was weird that she had those, like, hip parts cut out. Like, I, I can't see a girl, like, you know, feeling comfortable wearing that. I always think of uh, Katie Bishop being kind of like April Ludgate from Parks and Recreation, so... I don't know. I, I can see her, you know, kind of making fun of that kind of costume choice, but... I don't know. I mean, like, it's one of those things that kind of works, like, as a drawing. But, like, you know, maybe in the real life wouldn't seem that practical. I don't know if they've, you know, in the comics they've... Uh, you know, talked about that at all, but here I'm just kind of rendering out her face, kind of like trying a couple things, kind of seeing what works, like I'm trying not to make her seem too harsh. Um, yeah, again, it takes a few tries here, but you know, don't worry, I'll get it. So yeah, basically she's got kind of a paler skin tone, and uh, how I do my rendering is I do what I call like the two-cut method, which is basically like, you know, I put down like one shadow, and I put down a darker shadow over it. I have kind of a form shadow, and I have a, um, a core shadow. So basically, it's like one shadow is kind of like how the form bends away from light, and the other form, and the other shadow is basically how the light is blocked. But I mean, that's you know, more or less how I do it. And sometimes it's just kind of like that uh, lighter shadow is like kind of a transition between like you know the midtone and like the darker shadow. Sometimes like they're very separate, like in parts of the face. You know, I don't want to put all the face in like really dark shadow. Again, that's the thing I see amateur colorists kind of do a lot is like they don't really think about uh, how much their shadows contrast. So they always, like, every shadow they do is, like, 50% darker than the midtone, and that's not how shadows work. I mean, typically, like, in kind of ideal light, I mean, your shadow pretty much jumps about 20 to 30% if you're thinking of, a like, a value scale from, like, you know, 0 being white and, you know, 10 being black. Uh, so, like, when I do these two shadows, it gives me a little bit more uh, leeway in, like, how I want to, you know, shade the form. So, yeah, just kind of going through here, you know, kind of making sure I, you know... Like I said, I'm not tracing the contours of the form. I'm trying to show, like, the body in three dimensions. And I find it a lot uh, easier if you think of the body not, like, as in round shapes, but more of in, like, square shapes. If that makes sense. I mean, like, I know a lot of people, like, they do that traditional thing where they draw, like, an oval for a head. And, you know, the three lines are kind of, you know, the eyes, the nose, the mouth. But really, I find the head, if you think of it more, like, square, almost like polygon, you know, like PlayStation 1 games, it's easier when you're thinking of your shadows because you're thinking of, like, how, you know, like, the light would hit those different forms. 
so yeah, I'm just kind of going through here, you know, again, like when I start putting stuff down, I start adjusting it, and, you know, I adjust one color, and I have to adjust all the other ones. Doing her hair here, uh, again, like her hair is very simple. I mean, Brandon already pretty much, you know, showed me where the highlights of the hair are, so I mean, there's not much real work or little thought I have to put into this, so I'm basically just kind of doing the two-cut thing with the hair to make it really shine. So I've got, you know, kind of like the dark kind of shadow color down. I'm putting down this uh, mid-tone right here. And uh, in the second here, I'm going to put like the highlight over it. But basically, uh, when you do the two cut uh, thing, like I do a lot of times, uh, it really makes things shine. Like as opposed to just having that shadow kind of brown color and putting like a white highlight on it. If I do kind of like that transitional color, I've got kind of like a, a brighter kind of like you know mid color between the two extremes. It makes it seem like it's really shining. I mean, again, it's like it uh, depends on what you're doing. Like when you're uh, basically when you're coloring and you're trying to uh, show different textures, which there's a few different textures going on in this piece I'll talk about when I get to it. The texture is all about the highlight. You know, it's all the kind of highlight you have. That shows that kind of what texture it is. You know, like metal has a really like hot, bright highlight. Cloth uh, practically has no highlight. Skin has some highlight, but if uh, like say like, the, you know, she was like sweaty or like came out of the pool and was all wet, you'd have a really, really bright highlight on her skin. I mean, I've got a little bit of a highlight there, but it's just, you know, a little bit just to kind of you know, kind of bring like a focus to the face. I mean, like that's the thing. If you're using like a lot of like white kind of highlight, that tends to be like what draws your attention. So you want to kind of you know do that sparingly in situations. But yeah, here I'm just kind of adjusting it. So like that mid kind of shadow on there is like really bright and so like helping that highlight in her hair pop out. You know, looking like she's got you know really really healthy hair. Working on the eyes a bit. Uh, the eyes are one thing I see people kind of screw up. When you're talking about highlights. Uh, a lot of people want to make the eyes bright white. Um, I tend to make the eyes just slightly high, uh, slightly brighter than whatever highlight is on the skin. So I mean, I just it's just a little bit more because like your eyes and your teeth tend to reflect the skin tone. So you know, like it, like if you have a darker skin tone person, I mean, you want you don't want to give them bright white eyes and bright white teeth. So I'm working on Hawkeye now. Uh, like I said, I'm giving him kind of a duskier skin tone to make him seem a little more rugged and heroic. So uh, since he's got kind of a little bit darker skin tone, uh, his shadows aren't going to contrast nearly as much as a uh, Katie, who I made uh, kind of pale. So I'm just kind of getting the structure of the face here. Uh, like I said, like uh, in previous videos, I mean, you get used to, you know, like the face is the thing that you need to uh, concentrate on the most and spend the most time on. So if you're a comic colorist, I mean, you get real used to kind of the structure of the face pretty quickly. So yeah, I'm just kind of going through, uh, you know, kind of getting that jawline down. Without, you know going too crazy kind of getting the shape of the ear which is another thing I, I see a lot of artists they don't really understand how like what shapes make up the ear so it's kind of you know going in there get a little bit of that shadow from the hair uh, one thing making his skin tone a little bit duskier it helps is uh, helps his hair look seem really blonde uh, I don't want to make him too blonde like you know he's got a dye job he's you know Hawkeye's always been kind of blonde and uh, you know I always think of him being kind of more of a dirty blonde you know kind of like Daniel Craig so yeah going through kind of getting his arms here uh, like you see um, on Brendan's inking on his uh, bodysuit there, he, there's a really strong light coming from the left there. And really, like, uh, there's no way I could, you know, introduce any other kind of light source and not seem off, you know, with that heavy inking. Which, again, like I say in previous um, videos, like, that's kind of why I don't like people who spot a lot of really heavy blacks, is because it really locks me into, you know, like a certain lighting situation. But with here, you know, it works. Like, it's really only got that harsh, you know, shadow there, like, on his bodysuit, which is, you know, almost black. You know, it's kind of like a Kevlar, kind of, uh, kind of almost like PCV kind of thing. So, it's kind of going through shading his arm. Like I said, like, he's got that really, you know, harsh, like, shadow on there. So, I got to, you know, kind of make the shadows on his skin tone match somewhat. So, yeah, he's mostly going to be in shadow. So, yeah, going through and getting the shape of the hand right there. Yeah, get a little bit of, uh, you know, shadow from, like, how the glove overlaps. So yeah, like I said, doing that um, two uh, cut kind of thing works because I can add some, uh, after I go through this kind of darker shadow, I can really make that uh, initial shadow, you know, a lot more like warmer. So it kind of gives them, you know, skin a little bit more life. Uh, like I said, like, you know, a lot of times, like when I do this, I mean, like the, um, the two shadows, you know, build off of, uh, you know, basically whatever uh, sh color the midtone is, but sometimes like, you know, like I was doing Mars Attacks, like the aliens uh, had kind of green skin, but like I used that uh, second shadow to be really reddish. So I had kind of like a, you know, like a yellowish green kind of midtone, a reddish, you know, uh, first shadow, and then a, kind of like a dark greenish, like an olive green kind of shadow. And it really made the skin, you know, not just seem like they were painted green, but like, you know, they were like a living being with like, you know, blood. 
But yeah, that's kind of what I do here. You know, I, I really pump up that like first shadow, which when I'm actually working on it, usually I you know I have it more duller, just because I'm not worrying too much about it, and I just kind of want to you know just you know basically just getting my values down, so I, you know I'm not freaking out about it too much. When I start getting in that second shadow, I start moving things around. But like I said, like I'm not doing too much contrast on Hawkeye as opposed to Katie because his skin tone's a little darker and it's just one of those things like you know it's uh you know it's you kind of do it by ear like there's no like you know real math to it but you know if I make his shadows too dark it just tends to make everything too dark so it's just like everything's kind of mushing together so like with Katie you know she's got you know very pale skin and and which you know is kind of contrast with his kind of more dusky skin so you know again he's he's not getting as much contrast as she is but you know, like I said, like I said, you know, you kind of like you look at it, you know, you kind of see what looks good, what doesn't, kind of play around with it. So yeah, here I'm just kind of, I mean, sometimes like I, I end up just kind of tracing, almost, you know, like uh, the two shadows, uh, like on you know, certain forms, you know, which again isn't maybe the most interesting thing to you know talk about, but you know, again, like that transitional color I like a lot. Like if you look at the entire piece, uh, there's like an outline around all the bodies of this like really like harsh kind of bright. Uh, magenta color which kind of you know like for a pinup you know it makes everything kind of pop off especially if you've got like a kind of a white background it really makes the you know, character stand out and sometimes people don't even think about it they just kind of like they just see the overall piece and you know don't even really think about it being outlined it's not something i do a lot when i'm doing a comic page but i do a lot for pinups it just kind of gives it that extra kind of oomph and especially like you know if it's a white background like i don't like I really don't like you know the characters hitting that white background. I like that kind of uh, transition between the white background and the characters to uh, again it makes them pop a little bit more. Um, with this one, like there's the white you know kind of gutters to it, you know with the uh, crosshair design and everything. But really, that mostly mostly the characters are you know against that kind of uh, that cityscape and those like palm trees. So I mean they're not really you know hitting it. But again, it helps them you know set them apart, you know, especially since everything's kind of in those like purple hues. It just uh, you know. A little trick I like to use uh, pretty often. So yeah, if you notice, like I zoom out a lot, you know, just because I'm basically trying to see how it looks like shrunken down. That way, like uh, it helps me. Like if there's like any kind of little mistakes I'm making, I can kind of see it, you know, the overall picture. Because a lot of times, like you get really focused in on like you know rendering, like you know something up close, because you can zoom in, you know, with the computer. But when you zoom out, it's like either like it didn't matter or you know, you just it just looks bad. So I zoom out a lot just to kind of see my progress. You notice there, I added a little bit more highlights to uh, to Katie, and I'll go through and I'll I'll adjust her skin tone. You know, much more. You know, as I'm doing the shadows for her bodysuit, which is the majority of like her her mass. So yeah, a lot of times this is going back and forth, which is something like a lot of amateur colors just won't do. Like once they're finished doing a part, I mean, it's like it's done forever. And I understand that. I mean, it's like one of those things where like you know, if you're kind of on a behind a deadline, I mean, yeah, you you want to kind of maximize your time, but I'm constantly kind of going back and forth, you know, to kind of get everything right. Uh, if you notice, like, uh, yeah, like I said, like, I'm trying to match her with uh, the shading on Hawkeye there, who's got that very heavy shadow to it. So a lot of her is going to be in shadow, but not quite as harsh as uh, Hawkeye. I'm kind of cheating a little bit, where she, she's got a little bit uh, more of a forgiving kind of uh, light on her, but I want to, you know, keep her mostly kind of uh, in shadow there. Like I mentioned in previous videos, uh, I kind of always keep this in my head. Uh, my mentor taught me this, uh, called the rules of uh, rule of thirds, which is basically a form is either uh, one third or two thirds in shadow because uh, anything else like isn't dynamic enough. So I always try to keep that in mind. But again, you know that's not like a hard math equation. It's, uh, it's something I kind of try to think of. So right there, like you can see on her shoulder, I've got that really kind of like uh, harsh shadow there, which a lot of people uh, wouldn't put in. But that's just because, like, you know, it's like her, her breasts kind of protrude more than her shoulder does. So, you know, just kind of uh, working on the anatomy there. You know, again, there's some uh, there's some lines already put in there, which is, like, kind of where the, the cloth is stressing against, like, uh, that bandolier. So I'm trying to, you know, figure out a good way to shade that without, you know, overdoing it. So I'm kind of going back and forth. Again, having zoomed out here, just so I'm checking my overall progress. So, yeah, you know, I'm... Um, Again, it's one of those things where, you know, it's, uh, breasts are one of the things that, you know, are often, you know, horribly mangled by amateur artists, so I'm trying to, you know, just trying to get them to, you know, seem, you know, like, you know, spherical objects without making them seem like they're balloons. And I'm keeping, uh, her uh, stomach mostly kind of in shadow there. 
like a lot of that light's being blocked by your arm and uh you know pulling like back the arrow so i'm kind of going through kind of like you know rounding out that shadow a little bit on her shoulder you know to match kind of more what i did like on her bodysuit again her bodysuit um it's kind of a spandex but it's mostly kind of cloth so there isn't really a lot of like harsh highlight on it uh, the shadows aren't uh, too contrasty um, you know, again, trying to get that shape of that leg there. That leg, you know, is a bit more in the light, so it's not going to be uh, hit with that shadow quite as hard. And again, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, it's, uh, you know, the anatomy I might be getting a little bit off, but I'm just kind of, it has to look mostly right. Um, you know, just, again, what I know about the form of the leg and kind of trying to keep it, like I said, you know, kind of more of like a, thinking of more of like, you know, uh, you know, straight lines instead of like, you know, spherical shapes kind of more boxy shapes and it helps out a lot so you know kind of got the kneecap in there you know got the calf kind of work on the thigh a little bit like usually like uh, when you're working on pants of some sort there's usually like around kind of like when the, the legs kind of meet the crotch or usually that's where the fabric will fold so you know you tend to want to like you know that's where you're going to if you're going to put in uh, folds that's where you're going to put them in but you don't want to highlight them too much especially on the lady so yeah just you know kind of getting that you know get that leg how I want it I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but uh, what I've been doing is I've been recording this and then speeding up the recording and kind of doing voiceover later. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't expect anyone to uh, color this quick. I certainly don't color that quick. And a lot of times I'm, you know, doing like a voiceover, I'm kind of like, it's almost like I forgot I did this. I'm like, oh, wow, it took me a long time to get that right. So, yeah, if you notice there, I'm, you know, kind of putting in that second cut there, that second shadow. I've already kind of you know, warmed up uh, that first shadow a bit. Again, just going through, like a lot of times, again, like, you know, I end up just tracing it, but, you know, it's kind of not the, not exactly the point, but I do like that effect of that, you know, kind of that transition. Uh, you know, like, I don't think there's anything on the cloth, really, that I need to, you know, differentiate, except for maybe some of the folds, but, like I said, that's kind of like, a, that's how I think of it, that's the kind of the method I use, and when I'm doing more of like a painted piece, I mean, I'm pretty much using the same method, it's just, you know, with the, with the painted piece, uh, there's a lot more, like, gradation, you know, like, it's not such, you know, harsh, you know, um, harsh cuts there. It's, you know, it's more of like, you know, kind of like a painted kind of feel, but it's the same kind of idea. I'm usually just kind of going over, you know, with like, usually, you know, about the same amount of colors I would on a you know, piece like this when I'm painted. It's just using a different brush. It just, you know, gives kind of a different effect. And, you know, it seems like there's a lot more gradation than there is, uh, you know, since I use all my brushes in dissolve mode. So I'm going through here, and, like, uh, eventually what I found is, like, and this is something I, I talk about a lot, is like, uh, one thing I see amateur colors screw up all the time is uh, adding too many light sources into a piece. Usually you just focus on one. You get one down and then, you know, you can go into a, you know, a second one if you need it and, you know, God help you if you need a third. But with, uh, if it forms too much in shadow, kind of like how Katie is, I tend to go back in and add kind of like a secondary light source just so everything isn't just like a flat color. It helps kind of like give the form a bit more depth. So I'm going to end up doing that soon, because like you could see, like uh, her left side, you know, on her right there is almost completely in shadow, and, you know, I don't know, it's, it seems kind of flat and boring, so, like, so I'm putting in some details that I'm going to take out, just because that, uh, that secondary light will end up uh, kind of overpowering him. So, like, like on her thigh there, I mean, like, there's a little bit of a highlight there that is just unnecessary. And again, you know, it's one of those things, like, it's just how you do it. Like, you know, a lot of times, like, you know, you, you'd leave the thigh like that, you know, it'd look cool, but if... Uh, if I start putting in a secondary light source, I mean, it's just, uh, you can't have light sources compete. That's kind of one of the rules. Like, if a light source competes with another light source, it just ends up, like, one will overpower the other. So, pretty much if you're doing, like, a secondary light source, it's almost like you have them coming by, like, completely different angles. You know, a third would be, like, almost like it's, like, a, you know, like a triangle, hitting it from, like, you know, equally from opposite ends. Because, like I said, otherwise, like, they tend to just blend together and flatten out your form. Yeah, so I'm going through here, you know, in preparation of that, like, you know, rim light, kind of uh, adding more shadow to her face, you know, knowing that it won't be entirely in shadow once I put that rim light in there. And, uh, like, in the Batman piece I did uh, last week, like, there's a moonlight, uh, which is what I use for, like, the, the secondary shadow, the, the rim light. Uh, but this one, like, there's nothing that, that harsh. Like I said, the rule is you want to usually have, like, your secondary light source, you know, about 50% as intense as, like, uh, the main light source, so... With this one, I'm building that secondary light source off of the color, uh, you know, the colors uh, from the shadows. And again, like, you know, you want to you wanna make it, you know, again, you want to differentiate light sources for the most part. So I want to give her kind of a cold light source. Like, one thing you see a lot, like, uh, if you're looking for uh, ideas for lighting, 
uh, one good place to look is any kind of cinematic television show. And again, there, you know, there's tons of them. Um, one of the best ones I've seen is this. It's a terrible, terribly written show, but it's got amazing production work. Is uh, this the first season of this uh, show called Hemlock Grove on um, Netflix? I mean, really, just amazing lighting and amazing color design. But one thing you see in a lot of cinematic, you know, like uh, television shows, like ones that are shot on film, you're not sitcoms. Is you see people like uh, they'll be sitting in front of a window. So if you notice, uh, like incandescent light, like you know, in like light, you know, from light bulbs and whatnot, tends to be kind of warm as opposed to like sunlight, which tends to be almost kind of like bluish white. So a lot of times when you're doing like a, a secondary light, you know, like that, like you want to, you know, you do like a really cold, you know, kind of like grayish light, you know, hitting them. That way, it, it kind of seems more like you know they're getting hit from like a light outside. But again, that's kind of a it just depends on what's going on. Like if there was an explosion happening, you know, like off to the right there, uh, you probably want to do like a really harsh kind of yellow or like yellowish orange kind of light that they're hit, getting hit by it. Um, if there's you know some kind of like you know glowing swamp gas, you know kind of like a toxic green kind of light hitting him would be you know look really cool. Again, just depends on what's going on. But like right here, there's no like really defined light source. Like there's no you know sun, there's no lamp, there's no explosion, there's no campfire. So I mean it's, it's kind of just uh, kind of just doing like you know you know, kind of like normal lighting. So, I mean, they're pretty much being hit by like a yellow, kind of yellowish orange, you know, like sun or incandescent light. And, you know, from that left side, on the right side, they're getting hit by, you know, some colder bounce light. Like maybe the light's bouncing off that white surface, you know, like if they were like in a photo shoot and it's kind of like reflecting back up. That's one thing you see a lot, like a professional, um, professional photo is like someone will be actually standing there with like a big white piece of like a reflective material, like reflecting light, like up in the shadow, you know, to kind of, uh, you know, kind of uh, give it a less, you know, shadows make it less harsh and you know, kind of give more uh, form to the person. So, like I said, like, you know, look at, um, look at, uh, you know, like, uh, like again, you know, like procedural cop shows, uh, cinematic television shows. I mean, because that has ideal lighting and maybe not the most interesting lighting, but if you're looking at, you know, just like a good way to, you know, to light a, light a, you know, your subjects, because like when you, you know, you want to, you want to cheat the light sources to like optimum readability. Like you don't want to put you know people's faces in shadow if they're having a conversation. You want to kind of keep their, you know, you you want to make it readable. So, again, like if you look at those like procedural shows and whatnot, I mean, like they, they cheat light a lot, but they always make sure you know like what you're supposed to be looking at. You know, you're looking at you can see everybody in frame. You know who's talking. You know, that's another thing. Like I'll see like you know, like uh, amateur colorists. I mean, they'll they'll stick to a light source which is technically correct, but then like all the faces will be in shadow of like people having a conversation. It's just you know it's just wrong. Like you wanna again like the the operative word here is ideal. So so now I'm going through and on a uh, Katie's uh, you know kind of the dark parts of her costume. I'm assuming this is you know again like you know kind of a leatherish you know like material got similar to like you know maybe what Hawkeye's wearing. So, you know, I'm giving it kind of more of a highlight. It's a similar process to what I did with her hair. Uh, you know, adjusting uh, the shadows there. Because that's one thing, like, uh, you know, like, like I said, like, highlight is all, is like how you know what texture something is. Um, highlight, you know, you have a little more leeway with highlight. Like, you can screw up the highlights on something and it won't really matter. Most people won't notice as long as you got the shadows right. So as long as you've got, like, good, interesting shapes for the shadow. And that's another thing, like, you know, you want to... You want, you know, you want to, you know, base your shadows on reality or, or anatomy, but, like, really, I mean, you got to make some interesting shapes in those shadows, or, you know, it just looks boring. Yeah, so right now, like I said, like, it's pretty much just a big black shape that, you know, Brendan already put the highlight in for me, so I was kind of putting the main shadow and a little bit of, like, that uh, kind of bluish reflected light, you know, coming in from that, like, uh, that right side. Again, you know, nothing really, uh, nothing really too spectacular there. I mean, he's pretty much done the heavy lifting for me. I just kind of got to go in and you know, basically, when you see, like, inks like this, as long as you're just not fighting him, you win. I mean, there's really, you know, no way to screw it up unless you're just dead set on, like, fighting him. But then again, you know, like, there are some instances where, like, you know, the what looks cool is a black and white ink drawing, you know, kind of like, uh, you see some flaws when you're starting to color it. So, I mean, occasionally you'll you'll have to kind of go against the grain there. But usually, like, you'll be doing that, like, in the hold stage. You'll, you know, add a little bit of lines here and there and kind of, you know... Uh, kind of flub it and kind of, you know, kind of meet halfway with the, the inker. So yeah, so right now I'm doing, um, uh, the, you know, the, the grip of her bow and like, uh, her, uh, quiver, which I kind of feels maybe like a, you know, kind of a darker brownish leather, similar to what I'm going to be doing her boots in. Kind of like a suede kind of like leather. Yeah. So again, you know, like a lot of times I, I looked up some reference for her costume and, um, 
it seemed like a lot of times her boots are black, but uh, Brendan didn't ink them as black, so I'm just going to go through. They're kind of more like fashion, kind of like suede leather boots here. Uh, so yeah, I mean, they're, they're leather, but they're not like leather, le like black leather, like um, Hawkeye's boots are. So they've got kind of a different uh, different shadow, different kind of highlight kind of structure to them. But yeah, just trying to get, you know, kind of make your you know, foot seem like a three-dimensional object here. Kind of working with the folds, but not trying to add more folds or, you know, go against the folds you put in there. And again, it's one of those things where, like, you know, it's uh, you can get kind of caught up in, like, adding folds and cloth real quick and... You know, most of the time it's, you know, you're not helping, but sometimes, like, you know, it makes it, you know, kind of gives them a little more realism if you're kind of adding a little bit of a few folds here and there. Again, it's kind of a matter of taste. I mean, you kind of, you know, you kind of do it, you know, and then you, you kind of see if it looks good, then you kind of go through and maybe erase some folds or, you know, smooth a couple things out. Or a lot of times, you you know, you just leave it in shadow because he's already drawn the fold in, so, like, why, you know, why am I doing more work than is needed? So yeah, that, that her uh, left foot here is a lot more in the shadow than the right foot. So just kind of going through, adding a couple little little highlights, but mostly I'm just leaving that in shadow. Just kind of going with a you know, like I said, going with a Brandon already put down here. Again, this this is kind of a leatherish kind of brownish leather leather excuse me kind of material. It's going to have a little bit of highlight to it. So I'm just going to go through, but it's not going to have like as crazy a highlight as like her gloves do. Okay, like I said, it's more like a PVC, kind of almost more like a vinyl, probably, look to uh, her gloves. But yeah, but like these parts, I want to make it look like more like, you know, I guess, like I said, a suede, you know, kind of leather. So the highlight's not going to be nearly as, uh, nearly as harsh. Or, and I'm also not going to do on the highlight that, um, that kind of two-cut thing on it, because I don't want it to seem like it's burning bright and reflective. I just kind of want to seem like, you know, it's, you know, different, you know texture than her, her bodysuit and different texture than her skin so it's, it's going to get a lot of highlight but not that burning highlight that the uh, leather and uh, the vinyl would not get and again you know it's uh you, you build off like the the mid-tone like you know that like that uh highlight tone you know is as you can see it's not anywhere near as bright as that white but like you know put against the shadow and put against the uh the mid-tone it, it comes off as very bright you know it comes off as what it is but you know, like a lot of people, like they'll they'll start with like almost white, like for their highlights, and it's just kind of hard to. They just kind of get into like a thing where it's kind of they don't, you know, it's like they, they already go to the most extreme level, and it's kind of hard to back out, you know. So, like I said, like I just build up, like 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 if you look at Hawkeye's skin uh, highlights, I mean they're, you know, they're just barely brighter than like the rest of his uh, his mid tone, his you know the mid tone on his skin, which I'll, I'll probably end up lightening those up a little bit. But like you know, right now you know I'm kind of going into his bodysuit. Uh, there's really not much I can do. Like I said, like he's got that harsh shadow, and you know, pretty much Brennan's already kind of done the work there. So, I mean, there's really not too much I can do. But I'm just going to add in a little bit of shadow, uh, just that little bit of that uh, temperature shift. Which again, that's kind of what you want to do with shadows. If you get kind of like a warm light source, you tend to want to have like maybe like a little bit of a colder shadow. And people tend to think like you know purple. Like there's a big like. I don't know, like prejudice gives purple in the comic industry. And really what that comes from is like purple was a hard color to work with traditionally. Like it's one of the darker, or maybe it's the darkest of like, you know, what you think of as like the primary colors. And uh, usually it was kind of one of those things like, you know, you only really saw it for like villains, you know, like you saw a lot of like purple and green villains. And uh, a lot of times you saw it for like night scenes. And there's this thing though where like, uh, I don't know where this started, but I'd you know, I'd love to erase it from uh, the mind of all editors, but you, I get this thing every once in a while quoted to me where it's like, there, purple is only for backgrounds. Like, it is a background color, and, like, you want to use warm colors to, like, you know, push things to the foreground. You want to use cold colors to push things to the background, and purple is always in the background. And, I don't know, I love purple. I'm always using kind of a magenta and purple in a lot of stuff I do. So it's kind of one of those things where if I get a crit and someone, you know, uses the whole, like, purple is for backgrounds thing, that's that's about the time I can tune them out. You know, it's like, oh, okay, well, you know, you obviously you're just repeating something you heard that you don't really understand, so, you know, I'm going to just assume that, you know, the rest of the thing you're telling me is, you know, similar. But, yeah, I mean, you could use colors for anything. Like, you know, everything here is kind of purple, so it's, uh, like I said, warm colors tend to recede, uh, cold colors tend to, I'm sorry, cold colors tend to recede, warm colors tend to come forward, but I guess it just depends on what you're doing. Like, if you have an entirely warm piece and you, there's one thing in there that's cold, that will tend to stand out to you. So it just depends on what you're doing. It's, you know, again, it's like, uh, 
like I say a lot, rules are tools. Like, you know, if you learn a rule of like how color works or how lighting works, I mean, that's just something you're going to use, you know, to enhance your piece. Like you're, when people like, you know, when you, you go, hey, you know, like you're critting their stuff and you're kind of like, oh, this thing doesn't work. And they quote like, oh, this is, you know, some rule with something. It's like, well, it still didn't work. But anyways, um, yeah, I don't like that purple stigma. I mean, every color I can use for anything, depending on the situation. I mean, you know, there's, I've used pretty much every color for every, you know, to stand in place of every other color. Like one of the smartest uh, piece of advice I always got is uh, something doesn't need to be blue and it needs to be the bluest thing on the page. So if you're doing something, you know, very, and, you know, this isn't the most, uh, you know, tight color gamut, but you know, again, this is a pretty tight color gamut. I mean, it's, you know, everything's kind of purplish. So everything's going to be in that purple range, but I would say if something's, you know, is like, you know, in real life red or whatnot, I mean, it just has to be the reddest thing on the page. So, you know, like, like, like the skin tones are a good example. I mean, they're, they're, you know, in the purple range, and, you know, with uh, Hawkeyes maybe going into more into the reddish range, but, you know, Katie's skin tone is the most, you know, like, Caucasian-ish skin tone on the page, so, I mean, really, it reads as that, you know. And again, you know, Hawkeye's hair, I mean, Hawkeye's hair is, you know, blonde, but right now it's reading as, you know, kind of like a whitish color. I'll go in and kind of mess with that. But, yeah, it doesn't have to be yellow, it just has to be the yellowest thing there for it to read. And again, Pizza Dog, which I think his name is Pizza Dog. I forget. But, um, yeah, I mean, he's kind of... I'm going with him being kind of a cream color. I'm going to start on him now. Now, like I said before, like, uh, the human face is the hardest thing and the most important thing for you to master. If you can, you know, if you can color and shade a human face, I mean, you're 90% there. I mean, everything else, I mean, you can screw up. As long as you get faces right, I mean, you'll be fine. And again, that's one of the things, like, I see, like, uh, amateur colors screw up often. It's like they don't understand that. Like, they get really, like, into, I don't know, shading folds on, like, a t-shirt, but then, like, they screw up the face. So, yeah, I mean, spend the most time trying to figure out a face. And a lot of people get really intimidated by animals, too. Uh, but really, I mean, animal, it's, it's the same, you know, idea. I mean, it's, you know, again, just kind of going along planes, kind of, you know, just making sure his face seems like a 3 dimensional object. But really, I mean, you have a little bit more leeway with animals than, say, a human being. But at the same time, it's like, you know, we... We tend to project a lot on on animals, so the same kind of rules apply. I mean, if dog has two eyes, a nose, a mouth, I mean, it's, you know, very similar facial features, but in very different proportions. So one thing you're seeing here as I'm shading the dog is like I'm kind of using more of like a kind of a slash kind of motion, just to simulate, you know, the dog is like you know, he doesn't have like a skin, he has you know fur. So I'm just I'm going a little bit, you know, just using a little bit of a different way to use my brush, not really using it. I'm not using a different brush at all. I'm using the same brush, but using the same brush to get kind of a different texture. So I'm just kind of, you know, giving like the impression of there being hair without like drawing in a bunch of hairs. You know, again, like uh, that's another thing you see people screw up a lot too, is like when they, like if they have someone who's blonde, like we'll get into this when I go into Hawkeye's hair, but like when someone's got, you know, blonde or has like kind of light skin tone, like they want, or skin, uh, excuse me, light hair color, they want to go in, they want to render like every hair, and that's just kind of not how it works. I mean, it's good to, th it's better to think of it as like kind of like a large kind of solid object with kind of like a, you know, kind of more of like a graded kind of texture to it. So yeah, I'm just kind of going through here, and again, I'm, you know, I'm not doing anything too crazy. I'm just kind of, you know, going through and just, you know, kind of seeing what plane would be in shadow, what plane wouldn't, and just using more of that slash kind of method to, again, make, just give the impression that it's, you know, not a smooth surface, it's got hair on it. You can see in the inks too. I mean, you know, Brendan's putting he's putting some, you know, kind of like slashes there to simulate hair. And you know, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to overdo it. I'm just trying to give the the illusion. Again, it's like, you know, a lot of things like hair or like foliage or grass. I mean, you don't want to like, you know, render every blade of grass, but you want to give the impression that it's not just like a smooth surface. Like it's different than say like concrete. And again, you know, like he's majority in shadow just kind of how the light worked out. You know, so I don't really have to do too much to, like, his kind of hindquarters there. As long as I get kind of his face kind of working, you know, um, you know you, you'll understand he's a dog, and you know. But again, you know, like, uh, it's like one of those things where, like, you have to shade the entire form, just not the elements of a form. So it's like, you know, every, you know, his front paws are getting more light than the back paws. I mean, that's another thing you see amateur colors kind of do. They, they tend to give everything about the same equal weight and shading, and that's just not how, you know, objects in real life work. So, I mean, yeah, when you think about it, like, you know, if you're getting, like, say, like, you're doing, like, a photo shoot, I mean, they're going to focus more light kind of on the face than they are going to be, like, on the feet. 
So yeah, I mean, it's like he's getting hit with that light there. And you can see like on Hawkeye, I mean, that's a pretty you know, harsh light for the most part. I mean, he's hitting, you know, pretty much straight from the left there. So yeah, his, you know, his hindquarters aren't going to be hitting as much of that light. But I had a little bit on there just to kind of keep it, you know, you can see, you see the form. Put a little bit on the tail, put a little on the kind of his haunch there, just so it doesn't seem flat. And again, you know, it's, uh, like I said, you know, it's, uh, the big rule is like, uh, with art is you got to make something look cool. Like, everything else is secondary. You know, whatever kind of, like, stylistic, you know, like, uh, muscle you're trying to flex or if you're trying to, you know, get through some kind of, you know, political statement or whatnot, whatever you're doing with your art, you know, for, job one is to make it look cool. Because if, if it doesn't look cool, then everything else fails. So, yeah, I mean, it's, um, you know, like, I always think, like, you know, when I was in college, there was a, a guy I was in a class with who drew, like, a painting of, like, a, a girl in a bathtub and... And my art teacher was creating it, and uh, the guy basically he re retorted back that you know I you know basically I, I took photos of this and I opaque projected it, and you know so I'm right. And the teacher just looked at him for a second and just goes, "Well, then you need to learn how to paint." So you see lots of that, you know, like it's it's human nature to kind of want to be defensive when people create your stuff, but you know at the end of the day, if you didn't make it look cool, I mean, you know. There's really no arguing with it, you know. Didn't look cool. Don't like it. And that's again, majority of people buying your comic or buying your prints or whatever, they're not, you know, are trained. They don't know anything about anatomy. They can't tell you the muscles of the face. You know, it's just all that kind of stuff. They just know what looks cool. So again, like I said, that's why you know Rob Liefeld's a millionaire and you know you're not. It's because he's the king of making things look cool. So, like I said, it's kind of going through that, you know, that two tone kind of thing here, and you can see a little bit more like the use for like the uh, two cut kind of on him. You know, it kind of gives a little bit more, kind of like, uh, just a little bit more variety and a little bit more depth to the shading. Just adding in a couple of uh, that's kind of that first uh, shadow in there. You know, and like the, you know, just kind of making the, uh, kind of making like all the shadow parts not seem as flat. Just adding a little bit, of, a couple of slashes here and there, just kind of you know, making it, again, getting that fur texture down. And again, you know, just kind of a little bit of light on his foot, you know, just making it stand out a bit more, making it seem like it's, you know, coming forward. But yeah, like, a, like I said, you know, it's a, uh, People get really intimidated with like you know any kind of animal, but really, I mean, they're they're way easier to do than you know any kind of person. And again, you know, trying to get his color down, like you know, again, like he's, you know, he's like I think he's cream color. He's a little bit purple here, but you know, in um in relation to everything, I mean, it's you know, he seems like he's kind of a grayish color or maybe like a light cream. And here, I'm just kind of putting in a little bit of highlight. And I might have overdone this, but. I'm just trying to just put a little bit of highlight here and there to really just kind of get that sheen, you know, from his coat. Uh, just kind of make it seem like, you know, more of like a, you know, kind of healthy sheen to it, you know, similar to what it kind of did on Kitty, Kitty Bishop's hair. Um, like I said, I kind of went back and forth a little bit. I uh, might have overdone it a little bit on the dog, but I don't know. I liked it. I think it looked cool. You know, so mission accomplished. You know, again, it kind of helps out, you know, kind of giving form to his ears and whatnot. Yeah, you know, just kind of working on maybe not, you know, trying to make it less kind of harsh. Yeah. So yeah, I think I pretty much got a uh, Pizza Dog. Is this real name really Pizza Dog? Yeah. Uh, for some reason, I think his name's Pizza Dog. Getting his nose there again. Nose. Uh, you, know, you think of a dog kind of on a wet nose, so he's got kind of like a going up kind of a shine to it, kind of similar to you know like the leather parts of uh, Katie and Hawkeye. It is Pizza Dog, isn't it? Okay. Well. I, I kind of remember there being like part of a uh, like a joke about his name, but uh, again, like it's been a while since I read it. And again, like I said, like if I buy a comic, you know, I'm I'm really just digging the colors for the most part. Everything else is kind of secondary. But I remember, you know, I can remember this fraction Hollingsworth. Uh, I think David Ajo was the pencil. I remember that initial run being really good. And uh, yeah, I think I've uh, I think I picked up some issues that uh, a lady named Wu did. Uh, penciler that were also pretty good. I think Jordi Belair colored. You know, kind of like a little more of a rendered style than Hollingsworth was doing, but uh, still very, you know, kind of very simple, very interesting looking. You know, a lot of like harsh inks. Uh, you know, not too much uh, rendering. Yeah, it's kind of going through here, just kind of getting the other parts of the dog, you know, getting his little little claws here. You know, gave him kind of more yellowish eyes, kind of like, you know, nails a bit more yellowish. You know, again, what you know, it's going to come off as a bit more green if you kind of see it in a color picker. But um, you know, again, not try not to make it look like a, he's got like you know painted white nails. You know, it's kind of you know building off uh, the colors already got there. 
And again, like, you know, I've got to make him kind of look kind of like, you know, somewhat yellowish, but I can't make it really take away from Hawkeye's hair or like uh, his uh, his little like uh, collar when, when I get to that. So here I'm adding in some more of that uh, so that, that secondary light there on Katie. Uh, just because I, I, it would, you know, with how I did the boots and like how I did that side, a little bit would hit that leg, but I want to very much minimize the light hitting that, that leg, so I'm not going to have it go up, you know, too much. Just a little bit there. Because, like, you know, if you add too much light, uh, you add too much of a secondary light, one thing it does, it flattens out your shadows. Like, it just kind of, you know, it takes away from your shadows, and your form kind of almost seems like, you know, flat. Because there isn't that, like, you know, like I said, that rule of thirds where you want that, you know, you want one third, two third of that form in shadow. So, you know, again, putting that secondary light kind of takes away from that. So, right now I'm just kind of hitting that, like, metal there. I don't, I don't want to do it too crazy, but, you know, I definitely want it to, you know, seem like, a, you know, it's made of metal, you know, different, you know, material than, like, you know, the rest of her bodysuit. Adding a little bit more of, like, a metalish highlight, but, um, I'm not doing, like, that two cut on the highlight because I don't want it to, like, stand out and burn, you know, kind of like, um, you know, like her, like her hair or anything. I don't want the glow too much, you know, be distracting. So just a little bit, just kind of, you know, give it some form and make you uh, understand that it's metal. You know, not like, a, you know, not cloth, not wood. Yeah, just kind of going through, you know, not doing too much, too crazy. But yeah, again, like, you know, it's, uh, you know, I want it to, yeah, you know, I don't want it to be too distracting. So here I'm kind of working on like that, uh, the bow and her arrows, which again, like I'm, I'm thinking that Hawkeye, I mean, just for the sake of variety, I mean, Hawkeye's got like more of like aluminum kind of a bow, aluminum arrows, but her and she's got like kind of like a nice, you know, carved wooden bow, and I believe that's kind of how Brendan drew it too. I mean, like if you look, like Hawkeye's got a very kind of tech-looking bow, where she's got you know kind of more of a traditional kind of, you know, something you think like Robin Hood would have, you know, very you know probably very expensive, you know, handcrafted kind of bow. So. Again, I'm kind of making that, you know, that, that wood almost seem like, you know, natural wood finish, you know, not, you know, not stained, not too much, so just to kind of contrast with uh, everything else there, you know, make it look different than like the leather handle on her boots. So yeah, it's, 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 it's going to be a little bit shiny because it's got kind of like a lacquer on it. So yeah, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to put in a little bit shiny of a highlight, but again, not too harsh. Like I'm going to end up um, turning that way down. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, it's, it's just kind of barely kind of you know, it's barely kind of contrasting with it. Like I said, like, you know, it's, uh, you know, your highlight's how you know what texture something is, and, you know, it's like the intensity of the highlight, how much of a highlight, you know. Like, you know, leather's got, like, a, a harsher highlight than, like, wood, but it doesn't have nearly as harsh of a highlight as something that's, like, metal. So, again, it's just kind of like, you know, it's, it's mostly it's done from observation. You know, like, if you ever, uh, you know, if you ever kind of try to figure out something, you know, just Google it. You know, maybe get two pictures, like, you know, if you're lucky, you can get a picture of, like, you know, something side by side to kind of figure out what it is, but, you know, it's like, a, you know, you just want to give people the idea of what it is. You know, you don't have to, you know, necessarily, you know, get it 100% accurate, as long as it kind of, you know, comes off as basically what you're going for. And again, I got these arrows here, I'm just trying to, like, the little feather part of the arrows, I'm just trying to give a little bit more depth to it, and just a little bit of shading, but not going too crazy. I mean, they're made of, you know, either feathers or like a feather-like material. So yeah, it's giving a little more depth, it's kind of giving more variety, but you know, again, it's like, you know, this, is, this isn't all about, you know, how well I can render, you know, the feathers on an arrow, so I'm not going too nuts. So yeah, it looks like I pretty much got Katie done, so I'm gonna go back into Hawkeye here. So yeah, since I've got this uh, secondary light on Katie, I'm gonna add some on him too. And if you look at the inks on, um, the bodysuit, I mean, Brendan's already put that kind of like rim light in there, uh, which I'm going to, on this suit, I'm going to leave kind of pretty much alone. Because, you know, I don't want it to, you know, be too overpowering. But right now, I'm just kind of trying to get like a basic shape. And it takes me a little while to get this one. You know, it's like right now, like that secondary light's way too harsh. And, you know, I don't want it hitting him nearly as, as hard as it's hitting Katie. But, you know, again, I've got that light in there with Katie. And a lot of him is kind of in shadow, too. So I want to add some in there just to kind of, so it does, he's not so flat. But, you know, not too much where it's like, you know, that he's getting hit by this crazy light. Because, like I said, like, that's one thing. Like, that secondary lighting, that can get away with you. I mean, that can get away from you, like, really quick. And next thing you know, you've got, like, you know, eight different light sources and, you know, crazy stuff going on. And it just, you know, looks like crap. 
or it looks like you know when when comics uh, they first learned how to digital color like in the 90s and like everything had like a hundred light sources on it because it's like man if one light source looks cool two looks even better but you know three looks even more extreme you know everything was extreme in the 90s even Doritos so yeah it's kind of going through and again like initially I'm putting way too much you know putting way too much secondary light in in there like if you look at like the highlights on like his back or like you know, the rim lighting kind of his back or like on the leather parts of like his kind of glove, I mean it's it's not getting hit you know that hard, you know like I put on Katie there, so I mean I've just gotta I've gotta you know really tone that down and too too like uh, his skin tones like like I said the jump between like the mid tone and the shadow on his skin tone is is a lot more subtle than on Katie, so if I do too bright of a if I do too bright of a secondary light, it's gonna be really distracting, so I'm just kind of trying to. Just to give us a little bit of hint to it without being too overpowering. And yeah, again, like it's one of those things like, you know, I put too much of a too of a secondary lighting in there, and then all of a sudden a shadow seems kinda of washed out, so then I gotta make the shadow darker. And it's just you know, there's a lot of push and pull when you're working on a piece like this. A lot of back and forth. Again, now I've gotta like work on his highlights, you know. Got some on his hand, put a little bit on his hand. A little bit just a little bit on his arm. But you know, again, you know, it's like you know, if you do too many highlights, it kind of takes over and it looks look like he's either sweaty or wet or you know made of plastic or something. So just a little bit of highlights in there. So that that work for the moment. Uh, again, working on his uh, quiver and his belt, which I'm going to make slightly more of a leather material than like the rest of his bodysuit. I mean, just for contrast. I think initially I was going to make it gray, but uh, I just kind of made it more of a brownish color. But again, I don't want it to like you know look like Katie's quiver or her boots or anything. So it's it's. Uh, you know, slightly different. Again, not too much I'm going to do on, like, the rendering. You know, because, like I said, like, uh, Brendan's already kind of done that, and so it's kind of kind of foolish to, like, uh, you know, try to overdo something that's pretty much done. So now I'm going in with his hair. And like I said, Hawkeye has kind of blonde hair, which is kind of, it's kind of hard to do under these lighting conditions, because, you know, like, yellow's pretty much the opposite of purple. So going through here, I'm just kind of, you know, again, using this kind of slash marks to kind of make it seem like it's a, you know, you know, hair kind of texture, and like I said before, it's like um, something doesn't need to be yellow, just the most yellow thing on the page. So with this hair, it's kind of like uh, it's going to be mostly kind of like you know desaturated kind of grays, because you know it's going to seem like since it's kind of a warm gray against you know say like that purple gray from like the city behind him, it's going it's just going to seem more you know yellow kind of naturally, you know, because there's no yellow there, so it's kind of uh, grays, neutrals, beiges uh, tend to be like those blank um, scrabble little, you know, little pieces. You know, they can be anything. So that's kind of how I like to think of it. You know, you start using like grays and tight color schemes like this, and it'll kind of take on like, you know, the form of, or the color of like, you know, any kind of missing color for the most part. Let's say like, you know, if you had like an all red piece and, you know, the gray would, you know, if you had the green elements of that, you know, red light like on a on something green would basically just turn it gray so like you know anything kind of like in a coldish gray might you know take on kind of a green kind of color like you know if everything else is you know kind of red and as it's going through just kind of you know adding the two cuts there kind of making more of a hair texture kind of messing around with the hair again it's like blonde hair tends to be like reflect a lot of color from the skin like you know blonde hair isn't like bright yellow it tends to be kind of like a, just you know slightly slightly like lighter and, and also slightly darker than the skin tone it's very similar to a skin tone so blonde hair is one of those things that's like really hard to like pull off unless you're doing like a you know, like really a natural kind of platinum kind of blonde but like you know someone like him I mean, he's got very sandy kind of dirty blonde hair so it's going to be very similar to his skin tone so i mean you got to watch out with like you know blonde hair because it's, it's easy to make it look like he's got like a gumby head so I'm adding a little bit of a, a little bit of a highlight uh, to the back of his head too, just to kind of you know, get that hair some more form. Doing his bandages again. The bandages here, I mean, it's just kind of very basic shading on the bandages. I don't need to do you know anything real crazy there. They just have to you know come off as being a different color than his skin, kind of white, you know, so the shadows can't be too dark. But yeah, I mean, it's pretty pretty simple for the most part. Again, kind of zooming out, kind of looking at the piece, liking how it's coming together. Back in the pocket a little bit. Go on these feathers. And again, she's got kind of more of magenta feathers. He's got more purple feathers. And that's one of those things, like, you know, people, you know, they, they say there's, you know, purple is a very limited color, but really I find purple very, there's a lot you can do with purple. You can go pretty much into blue or pretty much into magenta. 
But as you find out, like there's, I mean, most colors you can do a lot with. I think red's probably the uh, color that's hardest to work with because like red only exists as red in like certain values. So like if red's too light, it either looks like, you know, pink or orange, you know, too dark, it turns brown. So I mean, per I think red is way, way harder to work with than purple, but you know, purple, like I said, has got this bad reputation in the industry because you know, like purple is one of those things like it is often printed way too dark, almost black. So people tended to use it very sparingly or like they tended to use like very like light purples, you know, like uh, if you look at uh, old comics, I mean, pretty much the rule of thumb was like all the, the characters got like the kind of solid colors and all the backgrounds kind of had more of like a pastel or like a screen if you know anything about printing. So, yeah, if you use like a solid purple, it's pretty much just going to print like black, like in the old style coloring. So, I mean, like I said, like a lot of times they just kind of either only had like villains use purple or like they just kind of very sparingly use it for night scenes. But even then it'd be like, you know, 50% intensity of purple. So just kind of going with these, these gloves here. I'm trying to make it look a little bit, the gloves and the boots may be a slightly different material, like more of a leather than like, you know, his uh, rest of his suit, which is kind of, I guess, Kevlar or you know, whatever you make it out of, kind of like a, you know, more of a heavier kind of material. So yeah, I mean, like his, his, um, his body suit's got more of a highlight than you would normally put on like a, uh, you know, like cloth, but like I said, it's kind of a, it's a different material, so it's, it's got a little bit of a highlight, but it doesn't have nearly as harsh a highlight as, like, his gloves and his boots, which I think would be more like a leather, and again, you know, it's like cloth tends to have no highlight, uh, spandex tends to have, like, a little bit of a highlight, and again, depends on the material, you know, leather or, and suede definitely has more of a highlight than, you know, cloth, so yeah, his bodysuit, I mean, again, with all that black, you know, it's like, I want to give it a little bit of highlight so it's not flat, but I don't want to make it seem like, you know, he's, you know, dressed up completely in like, you know, PVC or something. Yeah, again, again, the boots just kind of going through, you know, very simple, not, not, not really stressing them out too much. You know, Brendan's, like I said, Brendan's on the heavy lifting. Uh, you know, maybe put a little bit of a uh, secondary light there, you know, so it's not so flat. we do now. You know, again, that's way too blue initially, but like I said, with uh, the dissolve mode method I use, well, only motion dissolve mode, it's really easy for me to kind of grab a color and like adjust it. So I'm constantly kind of adjusting you know, color after the fact. A lot of times it's better just to put something down and then, you know, kind of mess with it later. Because, again, it depends on what technique you use. And, again, like, you know, I I use dissolve mode. Uh, I'm the only person I think uses dissolve mode, like, this much. Um, you know, definitely, like, if, you know, normal mode works for you, use normal mode, you know. Um, I just find, you know, this dissolve mode is kind of easier to kind of tweak things with. Because when I was... Uh, I was using normal mode pretty much exclusively. Like it, it, just, it was so hard for me to kind of like adjust things. I was constantly to had almost like to repaint things, you know, to adjust it. So, or I'm using the HSB sliders like way too much, or like color balance and stuff. So with you know with the with um dissolve mode, it's just way easier for me to go back and do things. And another thing, I I kind of like uh again, there's some uh there's some kind of outdated books on coloring that people get a hold of or DVDs on coloring. Uh, that use screen mode a lot, which like I like I said, I tend to think of that as being like uh, the Wildstorm method because I think it was Wildstorm, their coloring department back in the day that kind of figured it out. But like yeah, using the whole screen mode and kind of the cut and grad thing was pretty revolutionary for comics like when uh, they first came out. And again, it was like using like very ancient kind of computers and you know, using a mouse instead of a tablet. It was like really kind of hard to get you know kind of like a realistic kind of. Uh, realistic computer coloring, so I mean, a lot of that, those old methods like screen mode were used, you know, when there was like a whole department full of people trying to color like one book, and, but it's one of those things, like, I would, I would suggest like a, a novice colorist or a new colorist, like, try to learn how to paint things in normal mode first, and then maybe try screen mode, maybe try hard light, which is another popular one, uh, like I said, I use everything dissolve mode, but I would, I would start with normal mode just to kind of get, you know, get used to your tools, um, because yeah, normal mode is going to work, probably the most like kind of traditional painting which is you know what we're basically imitating real quick here i just kind of added like a uh, some kind of magenta and a little bit of to the a little bit of magenta to like the um mid-tones a little bit of a uh, purple to like the uh i mean sorry blue to the shadows right now i'm kind of taking the line art and adding a little bit more purple to it uh, i like to do that a lot with uh, prints kind of coloring the line art slightly it still kind of looks black, but I've added some color to it just so it's not like, you know, black, black, and it kind of blends with like the uh, the piece more. Now, right now I'm pretty much done. Um, I tried to put some uh, glows in there, but it just kind of didn't work, mainly because you're hitting that like white background, and a glow in a white background is wrong. You know, you can't really, 
a glow makes something brighter, so you can't really make, you know, like, white brighter. So, yeah, I just kind of, I probably should have gone out, if I really wanted to put glows in there, I should have got in, in the original piece and added some, you know, parts in the background, which I'm trying to do now, and it's just kind of not working, so. Like I said, like, glows, uh, better leave out if you can, you know, if they're, if you're trying to use glows and they're not working, it's best to kind of leave them out. But yeah, pretty much got the piece done here. Um, again, like and subscribe. Uh, it really helps me out. Follow me on Twitter. Like I said, I'll be, um, this piece and other pieces, I'll have a, a, a drawing for it in January. So, you know, be looking for that. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Bye.